molded into the image and likeness of God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be born again, to be spirit-filled, and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to, uh, we're committed to doing that. We're going to get ready to continue teaching, talking about what, what is a disciple of Christ? What is a disciple of Christ? And the reason why we have to really uh, open up our, get our, well, open up the eyes of our understanding and get biblical knowledge of what it means to be a disciple because that's what we're called to do. You know, you first call to be a disciple and then from a disciple, you go on to the other uh, uh, levels of ministry, functions and operate, operations in, um, into the, uh, the body of Christ because you can't, we can't be a, a, a um, it's very difficult for God to get the glory out of our lives uh, and impact the world if we, first of all, we haven't got a good understanding of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ because everything built, everything builds upon us being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to look at some, look at some scriptures here and we're going to see what the word of God says to us and encourage us about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. First of all, uh, the definition of a disciple is, is a follower, one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of others. A disciple, by definition, is a follower. You are a follower who accepts and assists in spreading the, the doctrines of another, the teachings of another. And you, you want to do it, you want to do it as, as a good disciple wants to spread that, that doctrine and those teachings as, as accurate as they possibly can. That what they'll get, they'll get the same message that you got. You want to be able to, 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 to spread it, to share it, to teach it, that they'll get the same message that you got. It'll influence their lives exactly as it influence, your, influence yours. It is going to cause a life change in your life and in their lives. That's the definition of a disciple. Is a follower. They're a follower. Say, I am a follower. You know, good leaders. I'm just saying this is good. To, good leaders always stem from a good follower. They are, they are a, a, a branch of a good follower. Good leaders are. They are good leaders are products of a good of being a good follower. Um, Bad leaders, false leaders, they are uh, they are a product of of, of uh, being, being following false leaders and false teachers. They're a product of it. They, they, uh, the, you have to realize this: is the blind can't take you no fu They can't they can't lead you. The blind, the confused, the, the it. Any individual that's not living by faith, they are not authorized to uh, uh, disciple you. They just not. I mean, they have to live by faith. Amen. And a, and a disciple of Christ, as a disciple of Christ, we have to make a decision, a faith decision, that we're going to live by faith. We're going to live by faith. Amen. So I will live by faith because... I have a faith leader, Christ, in my life. That's your faith leader. Amen. He tells us to, to have faith in God. Amen. So if you have, you know, we, as we have faith in him, as we believe in God, we can believe also in him. Amen. As we believe in Christ, we can, as we believe in God, we can also believe in, in, in Christ. Amen. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. Glory to God. All right, Mr. Reggie, you, you get ready to put up that, that Matthew, the 28th chapter, and the 18th through the 19th verse. Uh, now, a Christ-like disciple is a person who accepts 
and assist in the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, you're not, you have to understand, you're not, a, you're not just an ordinary disciple. We're talking about a Christ-like disciple. You have a different species, a different breed. You have, as a Christ-like disciple, you must go through a total life change. As a disciple of Christ. And you have to realize this here, when, now in this here, keep, keep in, in mind that disciples make, disciples make disciples. And, you know, you, you have to keep in mind that uh, whoever you disciple, that you have to have envision and know that, that you're discipling them and they're going to have to make a complete life change. They're going to have to make a complete life change. Because this, you know, the, the doctrine of Christ is a whole other teaching. A whole other philosophy that, uh, that opposes their former teachings and doctrines that they had. It opposes that. They, they, you can't mi- they, yet we can't mix the doctrine of Christ, we can't mix it up with other doctrines, with other philosophies, with other ways of doing things. Amen. Uh, the, the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ, they must be your number one priority that's going to affect your life. Your number one priority. You got to let go of all type of religious doctrines, all type of uh, different philosophies, and you have to focus on the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ, the philosophies of Christ, his philosophy, his way of thinking, his thoughts, his ideas. Amen? You know, disciple of Christ, uh, you become just like him. You're not him, but you become just like him. And whoever you, you know, as you get ready to make disciples, you have to let them know uh, that uh, I'm here to teach you, to assist you in becoming just like Christ. And you have to be able to see it in your life. You have to be able to see it in your, in, in, in your life. You must be willing to make, make your life accessible and visible to other disciples or to other, to other people that they would, they would look at you and say, I want to be just like you. Cause, because I, I, I see, the, see how you handle situations that come up in life, circumstances and conditions that come up in life. I see how you handle them, and I want to I, I wanna be able to handle, handle what come at me. I want to be able to handle it the same way you handle it. Amen? You know, you know, you, you want to be able to, you know, people can see how well successful, uh, like, you know, how well successful somebody in an Ivy League college that they go to and everything, and how well respected they are, how rounded and they are about education and life and things like that. They, want, they say, well, I want, to, I want to get what you got. I want to get the, I want to get the knowledge and understanding that you got. And, and you be able to tell them, so well, I got it from Yale University, Harvard, you know, uh, wherever. You, you know, you got it from there, and you can direct them to that place. It's a, you let them know it's available for them. Amen? And that's what you want to be able to know, that a disciple of Christ is always mindful of pointing to Christ. Always you're pointing at him. It's nothing, something that you did. Amen. You know, you know, let them know I was blind, but now I see. I was once lost. I was lost. I was confused. 
but now I understand God's will and purpose for my life. All right, let's look at this. It says, Matthew, the, the 20, 20th chapter, the 19th, I mean, the 18th through the 19th verse, reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Now, this is Jesus speaking, and he's talking to his disciples, those that follow him. He's talking to them. He says, Jesus came up and said to them, the disciples, this is after the, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus is getting ready to be ascended on high. He's getting ready to be ascended on high to sit at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. Amen. He says, Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, our power of absolute rule, our power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, what you understand, what was given to him, now he's transferred it over to us, the followers. Amen. You have the same, you have the same. Power, absolute rule, as Jesus had. You're partnering with him as a follower or a disciple of Christ. Amen. You're on the same level with Christ. You have to understand that. Because, you know, your old way of thinking is thinking, that, you know, our, our old way of thinking is thinking, you know, God is way up here and we can't, you know, we, he's too holy. We can't touch him or we can't be like him. But this, this same Jesus that's telling them about the, the, the power and authority that he has, he's given to them. He's telling, he said, said the same thing. He said, be ye holy, even as your father in heaven is holy. He taught them about the holiness of God that it could be attained. That it could be a tag. Holiness, it means one with God. Equal with God. In other words, you be able to have a, you, you able to have the nature of God. Amen. You're able, you're able to allow your life, your old life, to be separated from your new life in Christ. You've been called out of that old life, that old way of thinking into a whole new new life and a new way of thinking and living. Amen? I always, I always remember, people are looking at how we live. You know, and, and, and no Christian should ever, if you can be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you should never rock around talking about don't judge me. People have a right to, to, to uh, 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 look at your character and tell who you are. Amen? Your character. It helps to validate who you are. How well they can depend upon you. You know what? You can tell a person's strength and weaknesses by their character. You show me your character, I can, I can tell where your strengths and weaknesses are. He says, so Jesus came and said to them, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations. That mean, nation means people groups. It's, I mean, it says, help the people to learn of me. Help the people to what? Learn of me. This is what you want to as, as a disciple of Christ, you want to stay focused on your assignment is to help people learn about Jesus Christ. It's for you to teach people about Christ. This Christ that delivered you. This Christ that you encountered in your life and he changed your life completely. He, he, this Christ caused a finished work a complete work of him to be manifested in your life. You're not broken anymore. You're not broken anymore. You've been, this, this Christ uh, uh, caused you to have a whole new life. Everything changed. Everything changed. 
And as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we have to see ourselves that everything has changed. Repeat that after me. Everything in my life has changed since I met Christ. Yeah, since you met him. Since you become a follower of him. Everything has changed. I am a new creation now. I'm a new species, a new being. I think differently. I talk differently. All because of Christ. So what you got to do, you got to be able to, you, you as a disciple of Christ, you be, be committed to, to help people to know that they can change. They don't have to stay stuck in the rut. They don't, have to stay, they don't have to stay stuck in their old life, their old way of thinking. There is freedom in Christ. There's freedom in Christ. Amen. Let people know that. People need to know that there's freedom only in Christ. Amen. He washes us of our sins, our iniquities. He washes, of, washes us of them, and then he frees us from them. Then we won't have to get entangled in them anymore. You don't have to get involved with your own life anymore. Amen. See, we got to be bold and, and tell people that. He says, uh, uh, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, helping the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Now, this is what you have to be willing to be bold and say. I, I, I've learned of Jesus Christ, and what I've learned of him, I believe in him. It helps me, to, by me learning of him, by him teaching me, it helps me to believe in him. And it helps me to obey his word. There's a principle there that we need to understand. The, the, when, when you allow him to teach you, allow him to teach you to, with, the, with the intent for you to believe in what he's teaching you. You got to believe in what he's teaching you. Say, Jesus, I believe in what you're teaching me. I believe in that. You have to understand this here. It's very difficult, difficult for you to Obey something that you haven't been taught and you don't believe. It's very difficult to do that. That's why, you know, it's hard for people to believe that, that they can live sin free. Because, it, one, number one, they haven't met the person of freedom. And that person of freedom is Jesus. Freedom is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. It's not just some words. It's not just some uh, uh, philosophy. It's a person. A person. Amen. See, we have to understand, we're associated with a person. We're connected with a person that has all power. He rules over everything. He holds kings in the palm of his hand. Their hearts, their, their decisions that they make. Amen. So we're going to be able to let, let people know, you know, let people, because, you know, me, when I, it was difficult for me to, because to, I just didn't believe that you could live free from sin. I just didn't believe that. When I was out there in the world, I didn't believe that. I don't care, even, I, I just didn't believe it. You know the reason why I, didn't, I couldn't believe it is because I didn't know it. I, 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 had, I didn't allow myself to be taught. I didn't let Jesus teach me. The freedom maker. The author of freedom. Amen. See, one thing about to live free, you know, it, it, the, the number one thing it takes to live free is faith in God. You have to have faith in God to live free. Number one, you got to, you got to understand that, that it is God's will for you to be free. God don't want you tied down with your past. He don't want you tied down with fears and frustrations. Amen. 
So, you know, this is what you, as a, as a disciple of Christ, you're going to teach people that they can live free from sin, sickness, disease, and poverty. Let them know that. And say it boldly. Now, you got to get this in your spirit. And they got to see you living free from sin, sickness, disease, and poverty. It doesn't make sense for disciples of Christ, they, 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 they sick and saying they sick more than, than, the, than, than people that, are, that, that don't have, an, have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not his, they're not a follower of him. We need to walk in the knowledge and the understanding that, that sin, sickness, and disease does not have authority over us and poverty. We're not broke folks. We're not barely getting by folks. We're the heads and not the tails. We're lenders and we're not borrowers. I mean, we're, we're, yeah, we're lenders and not borrowers. Amen. We're above and not beneath. We're above, every, we're above this world system. Jesus Christ gives us another, allows us to be able to live in another system. A, a, a system that's totally dependent upon the word of God. Amen. So he says, bear the word. So, to, so this is what, you, what, what we can share with people, let them know that if you allow Jesus, if you, as a disciple, if you allow me to teach you about Jesus, to the degree that you start wanting to, that you will begin to believe in him, you'll be able to obey his word. That's the reason why people can't obey God. It's a simple, it's a, there's a simple plan here how to obey God's word. First of all, get taught. So, you know, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, one thing that, that what we're going to do, we're going to get taught the word of God. You got too many people teaching the word of God and they ain't never been taught. They never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They're still struggling with their old past. So he says, so this is the principle that you want, you know, you're going to, you as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you, you're going to get well, well, acquainted with this principle here that you're going to you're going to be taught you're going to be taught uh, who who you are in Christ who you are in Christ and what he's did for you how he's delivered you and how he set you free you, you know you, you you'll never I'm, I'm trying to live saved because you want to help you want to help people get delivered that's trying to that's trying to live saved but if you're not delivered from trying to live saved, or trying to know God, or trying to live holy, or trying to live by faith, I'm trying to do this here. I'm trying to be a good person. You need to know who you are. Amen? And disciples know who they are. You got, you got, you got the evidence you need to know who you are. Amen. So, so, so it says, it says uh, you know, believe and receive and obey. It said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and really what you want to see is this whole thing about baptism, bap, baptizing people is what you want to do. Let's just look at like you want to teach them to the degree that they're willing to allow themselves to be Im immersed into the life of Christ. Immersed, well, they, they, they want to just surrender all, surrender their life totally into, over to Christ. That's what you really want to teach them. To, they're willing to they give up everything to follow him. Amen. Now, it's going to be very difficult for you to get this message over if you haven't did it. 
You haven't did it. You know, first thing, first thing you have to, you know, as a disciple, you have to be willing to count up the cost. Count up the cost. Amen. Say, I've, I'm, I've counted up the cost. And I still want to be. And I, I'm not, yeah, and I, no, and I'm still. And I've still decided, that's what I want to say, to be a disciple of Christ. I've counted up the cross, I've counted up the cost, and I still, and I'm still decided, I'm, I'm decided about this, I'm going to be a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah, bless God. All right, so we understand that this is the first thing to do, you know, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we got to, uh, uh, and, 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 and this is a very important key that we have to be able to, to, to master. Is this here? Is stay up under his authority. Stay up under his authority. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can never get, you, you don't never rise above his authority. Well, you think you know more than he does. Well, you can, uh, you know, work around different scriptures. A disciple of Jesus Christ has to, has to maintain a repentant mindset toward, toward God for the rest of their lives. You got to be willing to change the way you think. That's what repentance is all about. Stay open to see, stay open to see the goodness of God growing in your life. Because one thing about it, what will what hinder us from being a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, is that we allow the enemy to cause us to become disgruntled with God about things that come up by situations, circumstances, and conditions that come up against us. And you have to realize what it's coming to do is coming to steal the word from you. Because of the disciple of Jesus Christ, the only thing you got to hold on to is the word of God. You got to hold on to that. That's your anchor. That's your anchor. It's the word of God. A disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to make a you have to make a, a, a faith decision that you're going to meditate upon God's word both day and night, because that's what's going to help you help you through the process. That's what the word got you there. The word will keep you there. The word got you to it's the word of God that drew you to Christ. His word spoken to you. That's what drew you to Him. You didn't come on your own. I didn't, you know, now I didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to be saved. I'm going to give my life to Christ. I heard the word of God was preached to me, and it, 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 it dealt with me where I was at. It, it, the word of God dealt with me in the sinful condition that I was in, and, and, and it, it dealt with me to a degree that it says there's hope for you. You can come out of this here. But see, a lot of times what hinder it, you know, you... Uh, you know, you, we, have to be as a, we have to realize this here. You became a disciple of Jesus Christ because you was willing to allow the word, to, the word of God to reveal to you your need for God. Because as long as people don't think they need God, they're going to stay away from it. You know, and, and I really believe this here. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, to make, your, make everything easy for you, Make a disciple. Find out, do a person. If a person doesn't know that they need God, they're not ready for, for, the, for, for you to disciple them. They're not candidates for discipleship. They got to know. They, they, they got Because you're working with people that's, 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 you know, working with, you know, uh, people that's, that's, that's going to cause frustration upon you. It, it's, very, it's very difficult. I, me, it's very difficult. I, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't think about marrying somebody that don't want to be married. 
I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't invest my time and my future in that. You know, see, the world got to, I'm going to make you love me. Y'all heard that song out there. So I'm going to make you love me. <laughs> see, God is not going to make you love him. So as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to be able to understand, in, in the process of making a disciple, you got to be willing to, uh, to be sensitive to the, to the Holy Spirit, listen to him, stay in the word, and find out that, you know, so you don't waste your time. Because that's one thing that will cause people to back off and get frustrated about being a, a disciple maker, making disciples. Your assignment is that you're working with somebody that don't want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're spending your effort, your time, your energy, your resources with people that don't want to be, don't, don't have a desire to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You get frustrated on that and you give up. Amen. So that's, that's one thing you want to do. Don't, you have to understand, this is because there's an enemy that w- once you become a disciple of Jesus Christ and you get to this place where you, right here, where you're getting ready to, to operate in, in Matthew, the 20th chapter, in the 19th, and the 18th through the 19th verse, being a disciple maker, the enemy is going to come at you and try to get you doing things that's outside of, because get you doing things, uh, want to disciple people outside of the parameters God has already put in place for us to be successful disciples. First of all, always spend, give your, your time, your energy, your resources, your knowledge to people that desire to become disciples. Amen. You know, it's just like, it's just like, what, 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 to me, it's a, a kind of a foolish person that you go out and buy a ring, this is a, a, a man to go out and buy a ring, and the lady said, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to get married, I don't have married in my mind, and he, got, he run, every time he's running behind, I got the ring for you, I got the ring for you. <clears throat> that's, that's foolishness. That's like casting your pearls before swine. And Jesus tells, don't cast your pearls before swine. And you have to realize that you, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a disciple of Christ that's committed to making disciples, you're one of the most treasured prizes here on the earth realm. You are. You, you've, you've, you're a great asset to the kingdom of God. You have to see yourself like that. That you are a great asset to the kingdom of God as a disciple of Jesus Christ that's committed to making disciples. Amen. All right, so let's, let's, let's move on. We go a little bit further here so we can really get to see some things about, uh, about this, about making a disciple of, making disciples of Jesus Christ. Of, of, of uh, what it means to be a disciple of, of Jesus Christ. And the one thing we have to understand what it means is that you're going to, you know, you're going to make disciples. That's the acid test. You're going to make disciples. You're going to be challenged in that. The enemy is going to challenge you in making disciples. And this is, the, this is the number one key that what is going to, you have to be well developed in. And that's relationships. You got to learn how to how to get with God, spend time with God for him to teach you how to develop. Look at this here. How to develop God like relationships. How to develop God like relationships. That's very that that's the that's the foundation of this here. You you got to be you and you can't get you can't you can't get this. This knowledge of this here from the word. You have, to, you have to get it from the word of God. And you know, you know, that's the greatest challenges that we that mankind is really faced with is relationships. Relationships. 
And that's the key. I'm a, that's the key to successful discipleship making is relationship. You look at this. How did you become a disciple? By getting a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's how you became a disciple of Christ. It was, a, it was a relationship. You got a relationship with him. So what, what, as a, as, as a, what, what we want, have to understand, you got to be asked, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to become a master in relationships. Be very skillful in relationships. You want to know the ins and the outs of relationships, the pitfalls, how, what, what, what relationship not to get, how to develop it, how do I get into one? First of all, never enter into any relationship without the leading of the Holy Spirit. You got to be led by him. Because you know, you, know you know what led you to Christ is when you heard the word, the Holy Spirit began to, to deal with you. Begin to prick with your, prick, the Holy Spirit began to deal with your understanding. He began to rest upon your understanding and, and put light upon it. The Holy Spirit did that. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go to, ooh, Minister Reggie, uh, let's, let's look at, yeah, here we go. Okay, uh, now, we, a Christ-like disciple is a person who accepts and assists in the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. A Christ-like disciple is a person who accepts and assists. You work along. You work. You 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 work along with Christ. You work along with Him, assisting to promote His good news. Who He is, the person of Christ to other to other people. That's what you're gonna do. Amen. You're gonna let people see Christ in you, because that's what they need. They need. Christ in you. They don't need you in you. They need Christ in you. Amen. Now, now to do this here, you got to make sure you stay focused on that he's in you. The Christ really, the spirit of Christ is in you. Once you got born again, spirit filled, the, 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 the spirit of Christ came in you. Amen. And that made you a candidate to be a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ. Because you can't follow him if, if you're not born again and you're not spirit filled. You can't follow him. Because that's what it's going to take to follow him. You, you know, born again means change the way you think. You will never be able to, you'll never, you, you, you will not be, you will not biblically be, because, you know, people got their own ways of doing stuff now. Crazy things of saying they, the fathers of Christ and stuff like that. But, a, but, but the biblical instructions of following Christ is that you're going to be born again. You've got to be spirit-filled. You've got to be born again and spirit-filled. And then you can be a disciple of Christ. And it has to be in that order. It has to be in that exact order. Born again. You can't, it's, it, because you can't tell me I'm spirit-filled and you're not born again. So the order is, this is, and it won't change. No matter how you want to change it, it won't change. You have to be born again. You know, born again <laughs> deals with changing the way you think. It deals, talk, talks about, when you're looking at born again, it deals about repentance. When you do a research on repentance, that's all, all of that refers to changing the way you think. Toward God, Toward yourself and toward others. Hallelujah. All right. Did I give you the scripture? 
for that, for this here? I didn't, did I? Okay. Uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter, and the 12th, and the, uh, the Matthew 13 and 12. And this, for, for this teaching and the time and everything, I'm, I'm probably got to, I'm going to have to stop and we'll pick back up on this here because we're doing a good series. We're going to do a series on this about uh, uh, what is a disciple, what, what, is, what is a Christ-like disciple, Christ-like disciple. You know, just out there, you know, you, you, what you, everything you say and everything you do, it centers, center, centers around uh, a Christ lifestyle. Everything you do now. Amen? It centers around. And, read, and we'll do that in the New Living Translation version of the Bible. Matthew, the 13th chapter, and the 12th verse, reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. A Christ-like disciple is a person who accepts and accepts and assist in the spreading of the good news. Of Je- You're always talking about Jesus Christ. That's your, that's your focal point about everything. I don't care how, whatever they get into, you want, whatever conversation going on, you want to steer, everybody, steer, steer the conversation back to Jesus Christ. He's been the center of everything. Everything. And the Holy Spirit will really teach you how to bring a... a a uh, conversation has got, got derailed, bringing it back on track. He'll teach you how to do that. Because one thing about it, you have to realize that the devil don't want you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He don't want you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ accurately and boldly. He don't want you to share that because that's a life-changing message. <laughs> And you have to believe that it is a life-changing message. It's a lot. You have to believe that this, what you have, what you got, what you received, and what lives in you, is life-changing. You got to believe that. That you've been given the words to change a person's life. To bring them out of darkness into the most marvelous light. A light that they've never experienced in life, but they need it most of all. The light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. You got that? All right. It says, to those who listen to my teaching. And this is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking. He says, to those who listen to my teachings. He's really telling, he really wants you to understand how important it is to listen to his teachings. To be taught by Jesus Christ. That you're going to say the same thing he says. You're going to believe the same way he believes. He says, to those who listen to my teachings, you know, give an attentive ear. You listen with your spiritual ears. So you can connect it to your spirit. Your spirit being. This teaching has got to make a a deposit in your spiritual being through your spiritual ears. Amen. To those those who listen to my teaching, more, look at this here, more understanding will be given. People talking about they don't understand. I don't understand because what you're not doing, you're not not adhering to, you're not giving yourself, you're not listening to his teaching. He's telling you, the more you listen to me, understanding is going to come. More understanding is going to come. So in other words, you have, to be under, you have to be built up in your knowledge bank that God, the more you listen to God's teaching, the more you listen to Christ's teachings, the more you're going to understand who you are so you can share. Uh, the more you, more you understand who you are, and who has delivered you so you can share that to other people. Because, you know, this, who do you think you are that you're going to teach me? You're going to be challenged with stuff like that. You can tell me about this and that. And you got to be able to tell them who you are. Say, I know who I am. And you got to know who you are. He says, more understanding will come, so it's coming. Just, just keep on letting Jesus teach you. 
You're going to start understanding more. The old saints, you say, uh, I, we'll understand it by and by. Amen. We'll say by and by. We'll, yeah, understand it better by and by. The old saints used to say that. I'm old mothers. Amen. You know, you, 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 if, but you got to stay up under his teaching. You got to stay connected with his teaching. You can't get his teaching and the world's teaching. Y'all, are you ready? You can't get his teaching and Baptist teaching. You can't get his teaching and Church of God in Christ, uh, uh, Pentecostal. That's not the teaching that you need. You need the teaching of Jesus Christ. Now, if they're teaching him in these organizations, that's, you, you're going to start understanding. Your understanding is going to increase about who he is and what he did for you. Amen. You understand it, that God is not working on you. He's, he's, he's finished his work in you once you receive Jesus Christ. Now, you got to accept the finished work. You got to accept it, that, you, that the work is finished. You, you got to have confidence of this very one thing. He that's begun a good work in you, he's already finished it. It's finished. Start looking at the finished work. It's, it, 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 it frees you from what God's going to do this year. God has already did all he's going to do for you through Jesus Christ. You got to let him teach you about that. Don't get caught up in the world's teaching. Religious teaching. Don't get caught up in that. Don't let it suck you into it. Don't let it get your attention. Don't listen to it. Amen. He says, and they will, and they will have, look at this, an abundance of what? Knowledge. Abundance of, not just some knowledge. You're going to have abundance of knowledge. You, do you know the reason why he wants you to have abundance of it? So you're able to share it and you don't, you don't, you don't, it don't dwindle. It don't, you don't, you, it don't, it, you, you don't, it don't leave you. You're going to be able to have enough where you can share it and still have an abundance. But, but this is, this is the thing. You got to stay, you got to keep on listening to him teach you. Allowing him to teach you. Allowing him to take you into the deep riches of his word. What gets into the recesses of your thinking. It gets into the recesses of your thinking. In other words, what gets in your thinking and you rest in that, you wait in it, and let, allow God to manifest it to you. Amen. Amen. So it says, but look at the, but for those who are not listening, what's the key here? Listening. What's the key here? Listening. See, a, a, a lot of people get taught things, but they don't let that, what they, they don't apply what they're teaching, what they're getting taught. You got to apply this here. Amen. You, you're in a place, you're not going to let none of this get, get, get by. You're not going to let the devil... Uh, get, get you distracted about anything that's being taught. And you have to realize that the devil, you know, as soon as God getting ready to teach you and, and reveal to you, the devil come up with you on all kind of crazy stuff. Try to distract you from being taught. He put a sleeping spirit on you. A tired spirit on you. A wandering mind spirit on you. And you got to resist that stuff. So you can stay focused and receive what God has for you. Because what you're not off on, that's the exact thing the devil didn't want you to hear. That's going to be your deliverance right there. That's why, you know, church, the church, church is designed, it's a, it's a, church is a teaching institution on a level they cannot even be compared to the highest learning institution in this world. Can't be compared to it. What you get in the church, when, once the church it commits itself that we're going to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
We're going to teach the kingdom of God. We're going to teach that there's nothing in this world, no learning institute can compare to the wisdom and the knowledge that God has deposited in the church. That's the reason why the devil wants to keep people out of church so they can't be successful disciples and they can't disciple other people. That's a, that's a strategy of the devil to want to keep people out of church. And, 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 and you will never be a successful disciple that, make another, that makes, you'll never be a, a successful disciple of Christ that makes disciples of Christ if you're not committed to a local church. You won't be. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let him fool you. He'll try to deceive you and think, you know, you, know, you can just, you know, you, you know, it don't take all that. You don't have to go to church. Because all they want is money. All they want is your money. All, all kind of, well, all of them now, they're hypocrites. They're all, all, all that stupid stuff now. This is what you have to understand. I, that line of conversation, that thought, you know what that, 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 what that said? Out there in the world. So once you, come, you get born again, you should never have those thoughts. The thoughts that you had out there in the world about the church, you should never have them once you come into the church. I'm going to say that again. The thoughts that you had about the church before you got born again, spirit-filled and became a disciple of Jesus Christ, you should never adhere to those thoughts, never again, because they were demonically inspired. That you don't want to go to church. I have nothing to do with the church. I don't need the church. The church is in me. Now what's in you is confusion. That's what's in you. Because if the church is in you, it's going to draw you to the church. What's in, when people think like that, what they got going on there is the spirit of error, confusion. And you will never be a, you will never be a, a successful disciple of Christ that makes disciples when you submit yourself to that, those thoughts, those ideas, those behaviors. You never will be. So, but those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. See, because you realize this here, every time you hear the word of God, you're going to be challenged by the devil to steal it from you. Every time you hear it, you, might, you better get ready for that because that's going to happen. Every time you hear the word of God, you need to be prepared to guard what you heard because the devil is going to come and steal it from you. Every time. And G Jesus warned us of that. You can find that in Matthew, the, what's that, the fourth, is that a Mark, the fourth chapter? I think that's where I got that from, what I gave you, Mark, the fourth chapter, and the 14th through the uh, 20th verse. You can read in there, G Jesus was teaching them. When you hear the word, you got to be, 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 be prepared that Satan, the devil, is going to come and, and steal well, he desires to come and steal that word from you, what you heard. He, don't want to, he does not want it to get in your belief system. Because once it enters into your belief system and you let it get processed through there, it will empower you to be able to resist the devil. You, you, you be immune to what the world is going to bring against you. Of, of, of what Satan is going to bring against you through this world system. What Satan is going to bring against you through this world system. And you have to realize Satan is the, is the God of this world system. Satan, he's the God of it, of this world system. There's two systems that exist, and we need to be aware of it. The system of God and the system of Satan. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And they oppose as one another. And we need to understand that as disciples of Christ. So you can be able to, you know, you know set people free. He says, well, I didn't want to, because for time, we're going to have to stop on this here. Because uh, that's a long, we'll pick this up. Because I want you. Most 
there's an alarming amount of, of people that get born again and get born again and get spirit-filled, get confused about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. They get confused about that. Because number one, it's not being taught. That you, you know, we think that, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I've heard through different methods and different establishments of different religions and stuff like that, but that the, the disciple, the disciple, that whole discipleship culture and mindset, it all died with the disciples. Well, I got to ask, I mean, which one? Which disciple? What, what disciple did, did, did died? Because he had, a, he had, a, he had a, a multitude of disciples. So which one died? And it's, he took it all with him. And the, the, see, this is, is the, now this is what I believe God knew that, that God and Jesus knew that that thought was going to get deposited into to the earth realm to confuse people. And he, prepared, and he gave the truth, so you can understand that the goal is for him, so he could squash that, wake up, wake, wake up so y'all can see this here, the, the method he had for, to, to squash that belief thought is this here. When he said, go and make disciples. In other words, you're going to keep on making them. You don't stop nowhere. You're going to keep on making them. There is, no, there is no end to discipleship. There is no end to making disciples. So that way, that squashes that thought, that idea that it died with the disciples because they kept making them. They kept making them. They kept making them. Amen. I believe that, it, that when we get a revelation of this here, we will outpace, if we committed to this here, we will outpace the devil in him making his evil thoughts exist in this earth realm because we keep on making disciples. Keep on making disciples that's going to teach the good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. We keep making them. Keep making disciples. Amen. You want to make them. See, the devil does not want us to make, does not want us to be committed to making disciples of Jesus Christ. What has really taken place, we've made disciples unto ourselves. If we, I mean, let's just, if we want to be honest with it. We've been producing people of ourselves. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be like Jesus. You be like Jesus, I can get along with you better. Be just like him. Amen. That's the goal of a disciple is to be just like Jesus Christ. They want, they want his thoughts. They want his character. They want his goals. They want his aspirations. They, they want to be exactly, they, and, and they're committed to spending their whole life around him. That's all they want. You know, give me Jesus. That's all the disciple of Christ wants. Just give me Jesus. Give me more teachings about him. I, I want to I be able to, when he teaches me, it affects my spirit. It's, it, 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 it affects the core of my being, who I really am, being just like Jesus. And that's what you want to encourage you that are watching, amen, to, to prepare yourself uh, that you that are born again, you that are spirit filled, prepare yourself to, with a divine purpose from God, to be a committed disciple of Jesus Christ. To be his disciple. Because being born again and being spirit filled, it will cause you to be frustrated in your understanding of being born again and being spirit-filled if you're not a committed disciple of Jesus Christ because they work together. They work together. The whole reason why you got born again, the whole reason why you got spirit-filled, that you become an effective disciple of Jesus Christ that's committed to making disciples. 
what was given to you, you're willing now to pass it on to others, to teach others. To teach others. To become faithful at what, at what you've given them. You're going to faithfully pass it on to faithful people. You're going to do that. So we believe in God that you're going to stay connected with this teaching and really receive what God has for you. Listen to the Holy Spirit because I know deep down on the inside of you there's a stirring that I need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I haven't entered in and surrendered to that type of mindset to the degree that I need to. But I'm encouraging this morning for you to do it. And I speak the freedom to you to do it. I speak the power for you to do it. That you, that it is God's desire for you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's his plan, his purpose for your life. So I want you to receive it right now by faith. Receive it right now by faith. Now I'm speaking to people that are born again. People that are spirit filled. To step into that arena, that commitment, that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. This making of the disciples. Making of the disciples. And you that are not born again, I don't want you to, we're not going to miss you. You that are not spirit filled, we're not going to miss you. We want to encourage you to get born again. To allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with, with him, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Allow that to take place in your life so you can be an effective disciple of Jesus Christ that makes other disciples. That you can share your born again, spirit filled experience, your lifestyle with other people. If you're not born again, you can get born again in me. It's, it's not hard to get born again. It's not hard to get spirit filled. It's very easy. Just repent of your sins. Just repent of them. Change the way you think. That's what repentance is all about. Change the way you think. Understand that you need God. You need him. And you're going to surrender to him. And receive him right now. By faith. Not by your feelings and your emotions. But by faith. Just confess it. Just believe in your heart. And then speak it out of your mouth. Believe it in your heart. In your spirit. I believe what this, this, this man of God is saying. I believe what, what he's telling me. Believe it right now. Because once you get born again and get, get spirit filled and become a disciple of Jesus Christ, your life will be, to, will be totally changed forever. You'll never be the same. So right now, Father God, I thank you right now for those that are watching, listening, Father God. We speak your word upon them that they receive right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now by faith. Just what you do is say, I receive it by faith. Just say it. Speak it out of your mouth. Believe it in your heart and speak it out of your mouth. I repent and I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And then, allow, and Holy Spirit, just tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I allow you to fill me with the Spirit of Christ in me. Fill me with it. And he'll do it right now. You do it right now. And I believe you did it. I know you're experiencing it. We want to let you know, we'd encourage you to, to call. And let us pray with you. You can't do this on your own. You need teachers, wise teachers, teachers that have experienced this here to share this with you. To walk you through the process of this, of being born again, being spirit filled, and becoming a disciple, a dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ. We want you to call. The number's on the screen. Let us pray with you. Don't let the devil uh, deceive you that you don't need to call. Yes, you do. You need to call. Make a bold statement that I received what that man of God was talking about. I want you to pray with me. For more understanding about this here. 
Now, you've did that, you have done that. I want to encourage you to do that. Call and want to encourage you to come out and be with us so you can get in these live services. You can really get an understanding of what it means to be born again, be spirit filled, and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's what we're committed to doing here. Teaching you about what it means to be born again, biblically, spirit filled, biblically. Uh, being a disciple, a dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ, biblically. We want to show you through scripture what it means and how that is designed for you to have. God wants you to have those experiences with him. So we want to let you know that there's always a warm seat of welcome here for you at Dominion Life Worship Center and we're, we're looking forward to seeing you next Sunday here at Dominion Life Worship Center sitting in your warm seat of welcome. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right, amen. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to deal with that uh, next, next week about that in, in, in Mark. The, uh, what chapter was that? The third? 